Hi, welcome to Olsaka Makerspace. My name is John, and today we're going to make a very simple drawstring bag on a sewing machine. Let's get started. Okay, so first thing we need to do is prepare our materials. Here we have some fabric. Um, this is a 110 centimeter by 50 centimeter piece of cloth. And we have a couple of small uh, beads to fit onto the end of our, our cord and some cord that would match the bead size. Uh, as long as these two things match up and are not too small or not too little for your purpose, you're going to be okay. This is a very simple bag and it doesn't have to be um, perfect by any means. So first, let's get our material ready. So this is going to be uh, more than what we need. Uh, actually, even half of this is probably more than what we need. But we're going to afford ourselves half of it. So let's cut this. Doesn't have to be super perfect. it looks pretty good we're okay with it okay now let's put half of this to the side we're not going to use it use that for something else later okay <clears throat> so this will be our bag and ideally we want our pattern to kind of match the thing that we're making. Um, but since we want this bag to be folded in half uh, as we make it, half of it's gonna be upside down. Can't help it, it's just the way that our pattern is. Our pattern has an up and a, and a down. So um, with our simple design, half of it's gonna be upside down, sorry. Here we go. <laughs> let's uh, let's figure out about how big we want it to be. Uh, my idea was that the bag is going to be maybe about this big, maybe in this area somewhere, um, and it's going to be folded it over in order to make the bag. So what we're looking at. Is basically something kind of like this, right? That's a that's a pretty good size. This top part's going to get folded in. So in the end, we're going to end up with something more or less this size. That's a nice size bag and once the top gets cinched together this is more or less what we're gonna have. Right? That's not too bad. Um, obviously one side is gonna be upside down but then the other side will be right side up. And that's okay. Not all fabrics have an up and a down. Um, I recommend something that doesn't have an up and a down but I really like this pattern myself. I like, I like brown. I like blue and I guess rabbits are kind of cute so let's do it um, let's let's have a quick look just to see if there's something better that we can do no I'm not particularly liking it made it into a taller bag something thinner and some type of a fold over at the top a bag of that size, that's not bad. However, I'm not a big fan of the, the fabric being sideways, although then it would be sideways on the other side as well. Hmm. I think just going this way is probably going to be best. So let's make out our, our quick little plan here. This is how we want to fold our fabric. 
and we want it to we want our proportions to be rather nice so we'll have some extra that we'll cut off if it's too wide when you cinch it together it's going to have a very pyramid type shape right if it's too much if it goes way out like this it's gonna look very strange as long as we're in like a sweet zone I think we're gonna be okay so not too thin either right I mean it's a very limited use bag I mean I guess you could put pencils or something in there but it's not so terribly useful if it's if it's this narrow so we want something that's going to be a little bit wide but not too wide a little bit tall but not too tall I'm thinking something in this area very nice sized bag right something about like that that looks pretty good to me okay so let's pull out our pull out our fabric marker and we'll start making some some uh, some marks you can also look at your fabric to determine which piece of it you like the best let's go ahead and even it up That's not too bad. And I think maybe a width of something a little bit less than that. Maybe right in there is pretty good. That's looking pretty nice to me. Right? And remember, this is gonna be very simple. We're not going to have like a double-sided um, bag. That's something that you can do with just a little bit more effort. But we this is something that I'm I'm thinking is good for beginners. That people can do here at the makerspace and you can do at home, uh, maybe with one of your first sewing uh, projects. So we'll try to keep it really simple. We're just gonna have one piece of fabric. The inside is not gonna be the most beautiful because we're gonna focus on on just making something that is functional. Um, I'm, a, I'm a minimalist myself. I like functional things that look okay, but they don't have to be like the most beautiful things ever. And of course, as you d develop your own skills, you can um, go that next step and make something that looks much better, um, but functions just as well. And it's always a possibility and it's always an option, but it does take more effort and we're going to try to keep this as little effort as possible that something that anybody can really do all right so let's go ahead and make some marks i think this uh this width is pretty good this is a nice looking little bag so we'll just make a mark up here and we'll make a mark up here all right So our marks are here as you can see and so what we need to do is we just need to cut just a little bit on the outside of both of these lines and since I'm in a makerspace we have lots of tools like squares so I'm going to go ahead and use one. Um, you don't have to use one, you can use just like your, your typical um, fabric sewing um, tape measure if you'd like. That's also fine. Let's go ahead and have a look just to see uh, how what size our bag is going to be. And it's looking like it's going to be a 25 centimeter wide bag. Sounds pretty good to me. We could go 30 if we really wanted to, but I think aesthetics are a little bit more important than round numbers uh, in this particular project. So 25, I think, is going to give us the dimensions that we want. So let's stick with that. Okay, so 25, 25, right? And if we can keep it about the same, that would be perfect since our fabric was factory cut, except for this side, which I cut myself over here, right? These sides should be, I hope, parallel or perpendicular depending on 
which which angle we're looking at. So let's uh, let's line it up as best as we can, just so that we keep it straight. Okay, and let's find our our marks, and we'll make some corresponding marks. Okay, so here's one mark. I'm just going to kind of remark it to make sure that it's nice and visible. And then I'm going to make another one on the opposite side. And do the same thing over here. I'm gonna reinforce this line, make it nice and visible. Put another one over here. Okay, now let's use a straight edge. In this case, it's a square. We're not going to really use it like a square. We don't need to. And we're going to make one more mark just so that we know that we have a straight line, right? Because we've, we're well, close enough to a straight line anyway. Because so we've marked each side about the same. All right, there's one. And get another one. Alright, that looks great. I must say that I'm really happy with that. Okay, now what we've done is we've marked out how, how wide we want that bag to actually be. And now we're going to need a little bit more space. And I probably should have thought about this before I marked it out. We're going to need a little bit more space. So let's just move over a couple of centimeters. All right, it doesn't have to be exact. If you just kind of line it up with your eye and make sure that you, you keep maybe a uh, finger's width or so between our line and our straight edge. And we'll make one more line. This will be where we cut the fabric. Now, it's completely all right that uh, it's just very, as we would say in Japan, tekito, which means uh, random or just kind of off the cuff, because this part is just going to kind of be um, tucked and sewn. It doesn't have to be any particular uh, width or anything. So this is like our extra. This is our our safety space right and that's pretty good I must say uh, we can give it a quick look it looks like it's a uh, 1.6 centimeters there and here it's also about 1.6 is 1.55 that's that's close enough uh, here we're looking at 1.6 here we're looking at 1.6 it looks like I have a very good eye for 1.6 centimeters uh, extra so that's interesting. <laughs> I didn't anticipate that, but that's fine. Okay, oh, here's my scissors. All right, so let's cut off our extra. Um, real quick, I'm going to, to think, uh, just to make sure that I'm not going to cut off uh, too much or too little, because once you cut, you can't really uncut. <laughs> okay, I'm happy with that because we're going for something simple, right? So here we go. Now there are a bunch of really good resources on YouTube um, for, for learning how to sew. I wouldn't say that I'm a great resource for learning how to sew. I think that uh, this is basically going to, going to show you how to do something without knowing what you're doing. <laughs> you don't have to know exactly what you're doing to be able to do something, but it does help. I feel like the line is disappearing before my very eyes. These, um, 
some of these these markers for uh, fabric are really cool because they are like self disappearing their lines will last only for like a day and then they'll just disappear you don't even have to wash them out and that's really really nice uh, especially sometimes you you want to sew something that you are not exactly going to be able to wash this bag I think should be washable but um, you know sometimes there's so something you want to make and you can't quite wash it and so you still want to mark on it with, uh, with your fabric marker but uh, yeah it's nice if the lines disappear on their own okay so that's that's our basic size there um, it's going to be folded in 1.6 centimeters on either side right so the next thing that we need to think about is how are we going to actually construct this and first of all when you sew something you typically want to sew it inside out why do you want to sew something inside out because when you sew let's say we're going to sew a straight line right right along this when we do so you'll be able to see the thread kind of dotted along the line we don't really want to see the thread so when we turn it inside out what's going to happen and you're probably already catching on what I'm saying it's going to be hidden as it's turned inside out it'll stay on on this side right it'll stay on what is my right side your left side all of this is going to be inside and the thread will hold it like this right that would be ideal and that would give us a bag that looks good from the outside it'll be very functional on the inside it won't be super beautiful but we're going to do a couple little tricks just to uh, make the inside look a little bit better as well and that trick primarily is just folding before sewing we'll give it a couple of folds I think something like this and over one more time right something about like that now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get out our ironing board and we'll need to iron this flat but something about like that when sewn together inside out will give you a very nice seam on the outside and on the inside right it'll be something like that very small it'll be noticeable but it'll look pretty nice right and that'll give us our main if we do that on both sides this side and this side then we'll have our main pocket and it'll look pretty good so far and then we just have to design the uh, the drawstring section which is also quite simple so let me get out my ironing equipment and we'll start ironing um, the parts that we're going to sew next okay here we go okay so here we have our ironing board our iron set to uh, an appropriate temperature uh, for our material in this case we're dealing with cotton so high and we have a little bit of water in there for steam just so that we can really make sure that things are ironed out nice and flat so we'll go ahead and first flatten it out It'll be easier to fold if we're not fighting with the fabric so an iron is a very important part uh, of, of a sewing project you often need to kind of flatten things out or make some really very nice uh, defining lines that will stay on their own while you're sewing and so you're not constantly fighting the fabric while trying to sew it that's an important point uh, that I found is that you don't want to fight your fabric you want the fabric to, to help you 
not work against you. And ironing it is the best way that I've found to make fabric work for you instead of against you. So that's pretty flat. I think that's okay. I'm happy with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this and we're going to fold it in a way that when it's inside out, which is how we're going to sew it, our fabric looks nice. So I think let's first we'll fold maybe half of our measured distance over and then we'll do one more fold over and iron it one more time about like that up to our line right and then when we sew we're going to sew in the middle of that now this is quite small um, if you're uncomfortable dealing with this small as indeed I actually am I kind of wish I had perhaps given myself a little bit more space here then you can give yourself a little bit more space and it'll be easier on you but that's okay I've, I've started I'm gonna finish so first let's deal let's uh let's get into about the middle fold it over about to the middle and start ironing this will take just a second and I'm not a great ironer I've never been a very good ironer it's one of the skills in life that I hate the most right up there with washing dishes because it always takes me a long time I never feel like I've done a good job but sometimes you just gotta do it right you can't leave your dishes dirty for eternity you gotta wash them and you can't just not iron things before you sew them before you sew them I suppose you could but it's not gonna look very good so you just you just iron it so here we go I wonder if uh, other people feel the same way I do about ironing and washing dishes I guess some people probably do but uh, I don't know maybe people who sew professionally or extensively as a hobby maybe they'll enjoy it at this point maybe if I continued uh, sewing more often I would also grow to enjoy ironing more it, it does seem like it's a sort of a meditative <laughs> practice so maybe it would be alright I don't know as it is I'm not a big fan but that's okay but you see how it really, really helps. I mean, right? This is obvious. It's, it's really kind of a, a non-option. It makes everything so much easier. Trust me. You, you may think, oh, I don't need to sew that. I'll just, I'll just do it live. <laughs> really illustrious words. But um, yeah. So uh, don't, don't just sew it. Iron it first. Life will be easier, I promise you. Okay, there's there's a bit of it. Now let's see if we can get that over one more time. Oh, this is so tedious. <laughs> I hate ironing. You're probably looking at me and you're thinking, what's so tedious about it? He's doing all right. Well, it's not so much a matter of just can you but do you enjoy it I guess I like to enjoy the things that I do if I don't enjoy it I don't really feel much motivation in doing it so I try to enjoy everything but some things you just don't enjoy in life I'm, I'm afraid but we're getting there going all right I'm happy with how it's turning out so far it's not bad now again I don't know if it's actually good uh, if, if you go over on your line that's okay 
that's not a problem because it's just a guide however you do want it to be as even and straight as possible so if you go over in the beginning just keep going over about that much uh, by the end try not to try not to change keep it about the same all the way through and you'll be okay all right so that side looks okay I think I want to make sure that it stays nice and flat now I, as I look at it I notice that this side is kind of all about the same and it gets a little bit thinner over here so what I might do is just I might just give it just a little bit of a, a retuck and try to, to even it out a little bit because it's more important that it's even than it stay with what you originally planned right I mean, because this is not something that, I mean, this isn't a pant leg. This isn't uh, a shirt sleeve. This is a bag. So it doesn't have to be exactly what we originally planned, as long as it just works out well in the end. Okay, I think that looks okay. Now let's do this other side. And just do your best. Your best at any skill level is usually good enough. Most things in life, when you first start to do them, whether you realize it or not, it's a learning process. You're doing it because you're learning it. You're not doing it because it's the best that's ever been done. So just try to get it as close as you can and be, be alright with that I, uh, I have a bit of OCD and sometimes it's very difficult to, to deal with because you sit doing the same thing over and over or you sit spending a whole lot of time that you don't actually have trying to accomplish a very rudimentary menial task and uh, it's not a fun way to live life but you learn through trying to uh, reduce your OCD that it doesn't have to be perfect and how do you learn that? It's, it's not an easy thing to learn. First you just have to tell yourself, I suppose. And then you, you keep doing things, but eventually you will realize from just trying and failing, but living with your failures, that what you thought was a failure was not so bad after all. And it was indeed good enough because it's useful. It works. And that is my experience with sewing. When I was in high school, uh, for some reason, I saw, uh, maybe it was on TV or something, I don't remember exactly, but I saw this, um, this fashion style. And it was, uh, It was like uh, some khaki colored cargo, baggy cargo pants with a Hawaiian shirt. And I thought, that looks really cool. <laughs> I don't know, I guess it, I, thought it, it th I thought it did. Maybe it didn't, maybe it didn't. But I thought, that's really cool. I want to kind of do that style. I've already got some baggy cargo khaki pants. And all I need is, is a Hawaiian shirt. And being in East Texas, and I believe it was in the winter time, or it was fall or something anyways, it was not summer, finding a Hawaiian shirt was damn near impossible. And so what I had to do 
was uh, sew my own Hawaiian shirt. And so I went to Walmart and I, I bought some Hawaiian shirt uh, print fabric. And I think my mother probably had a, a, a button up shirt pattern or maybe I bought one, I don't remember. But um, anyways, in the course of a couple of nights on the weekend, uh, and without any type of, uh, uh, what, what do you call it, the, the, the stiffening fabric that you put like in the collar and thing, I, di I didn't have any of that. I didn't think to buy it, and I didn't really want to go back to Walmart to, to pick it up. And so I just, I made the shirt without it. And it was okay, it worked. It was a shirt, you could wear it. It looked Hawaiian, and it looked all right. So I was pretty happy with that. And my friend especially liked it. And what I ended up doing was giving him the shirt. But uh, I did wear it a few times before I gave it to him. And I was pretty happy with it. So, okay, let's, look, have, let's have a look. Um, I can notice this side is a little bit thicker than this side. Uh, that's okay. It's not a big deal. You're not really going to notice once this is done. So, okay. So far, so good. Now what we want to do, we're going to use a sewing machine, and we're going to sew basically just kind of right in the middle. We want to make sure that we, we kind of get uh, both sides here. Um, how can I explain this properly? We want this part to be sewn to the bottom and so that it won't accidentally come undone. It won't unroll, unravel, um, and then have strings hanging out, right? That's, that's why we fold things over. We want to make sure that the, the cut part of the fabric keeps those strings inside, right? So it looks nice. So what we want to do, probably sew slightly um, on the inside of our fold here. It's going to make it look not quite as nice um, than if we were to sew, I suppose, over 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 here on this side. But we will make sure that it doesn't unravel. So we're going to stick to this side, and we'll have a little bit of a of, a, of an ugly double. Um, roll there on our seam, but that's okay. This is something that as you get better at sewing, um, get better at planning, and that kind of thing, you can you can avoid these things in the, in the future. Um, but we want to keep this project very simple, so we don't mind if it does that. It's, it's not life and death, right? So far, so good. So we're going to sew on the inside of our seam, and we're going to come up about here. Okay, we don't want to go all the way uh, just yet. And why do we not want to go all the way? Well, because this part is going to have to fold down on each side. Okay, kind of like this. And actually, we're going to also do like this. We'll, 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 we'll iron this in a minute. It's going to look a bit like that. Okay, so we can't go all the way up because if we go all the way up we can't fold it down right but you can go ahead and kind of just mock it up figure about how much you want and I think maybe about one centimeter or maybe a little bit less but about one centimeter of a fold down from the top okay and then down about that much looks pretty good to me you can do less if you like. We need some space for the cord, basically, is, is all we need. Okay, thank you, Windows. Um, so about like that, in my opinion, looks pretty good. So that means we want our... Um, we want our, our, our first seams to come about to here. Now we can look at our pattern and we can see we have these these balls, right? And we're basically just going to be at the bottom of these balls. And we can double check with our measuring tape to be sure 
where the air is. I believe it was these balls here, I believe. That's six centimeters. And it's also, well, it looks like it's about, that's looking about like six, seven here. Let me double check. Oh man. Okay, maybe our fabric is not completely straight. And that's okay too, that happens. Yes, I can see here, you can see that um, the top of this ball from the edge of our fabric is different from the top of this ball, right? So that's okay. So all we have to do is just decide how far we want it to go. Because this line, we hope is straight. It's, uh, even though it is, uh, it's not completely parallel, per perhaps, uh, what's, what's the word? I mean, it slants a little bit, obviously, in relationship to the, the print, but in relationship to the shape of the fabric, we're hoping that it's about right. And, okay, so what we can do, measure from this end, now, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be about. We know that we want it to fold down. And do like that. And fold over. About like that, right? So where is this? We can say 18. Okay? So we'll say 18 for this. Whoops. Got mark it ready. Measure again. 18 from the end where it's folded in half. Mark that. Looks good. And then we come over here to this side and do the same. 18. Right? You don't have to measure it if you don't want to. Um, it will just look a little bit better if you do. Making things even always makes them look a little bit better. Double check my measurements. 18. And... 18, okay, that looks good. So now what we're gonna do, we're going to sew straight up to this point. And that's it for now, let's do it. Okay, I really hope you can see this all right. Um, I'm just using white thread in both my bobbin and then the spool on top. And I think it's gonna match this uh, particular fabric quite well. So when you sew something, there's something that you want to do. Uh, my settings here, maybe you can't quite see them, but I just have standard settings so that my needle is kind of like right in the middle and it's just making like a 2.5 uh, millimeter stitch length. It's just very, very standard settings. <coughs> Excuse me. What you want to do when you first start to sew um, with a machine, you want to first go forward a little bit, and then you want to press your reverse button. Uh, my reverse button is here. Your reverse button sometimes is over on the side. Um, with this machine, it's here. So then it'll go back, and that kind of locks in your stitches. Um, going forward and backwards on um, the same spot a couple times can really make a strong beginning and end. Um, you don't need to overdo it. So I'm just going to go forward a little bit and then back a little bit and then straight forward, right? Until I get to the point where we, where we previous, previously marked. And then I'm going to go back a little bit again before cutting my, my thread. That'll just make sure that the, the beginning and the end, or the, the beginning and the end, they don't become unraveled, okay? So here we go. Let's put the foot down and a more or less appropriate location. Now remember I said I wanted to sew on the inside um, and that's because the inside of my seam here and that's because I want to make sure that this doesn't come unrolled and then have lots of threads hanging out inside of my bag. Okay. All right. Let's see. Hopefully no problems. Sewing is a uh, it's not a science. <laughs> All right, my foot's down. Here we go. Forward a little bit. Wait, where's my... Wait. Uh oh, oh no. Oh, great. Problems. My, uh... 
pedal's not working. Let me unplug it and try it again. This is a pedal that I had to make myself. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Now I'm I'm actually I'm kind of right in the middle. I wanted to be a little bit more over on the inside, but maybe that's okay. What I'll do is I'll, I'll just kind of bring it over a little bit as I sew. Um, right now I've got it, my, my stitches, I've got it a, a few in. Let's go ahead and hit, hold the reverse button, right? And it'll go back a little bit. You see how it did that? I want to continue going back a little bit more. I just want to really make sure. Okay. I'm a little bit afraid if I go back further, it's going to get messed up. So let's try it out. Here we go, and let's, uh, oh no, we're not moving. Yeah, see, these are the, these are the problems you run into in sewing. All right, there we go. There we go, not too bad, not too bad. Okay, and I'm trying to keep it on this inside section. Make sure that I watch for my, my, uh, the line here that I drew. A little bit more. One more. Okay. Actually, maybe one more. Okay, that's it. And then backwards. Okay. So this machine, uh, you press the backwards button and it'll go a few steps. Um, and it's, I guess, uh, probably enough. So let's have a look at what we've got here. To be honest, that's not so bad. I expected it to be worse. That looks okay. I'm kind of happy with that. Where are my scissors? Had them earlier. No. Just a moment. I'll find them. Can't have gone far. Here they are. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and cut this loose. Let's have a look at it. So here at the beginning, I had a little bit of trouble because uh, it, it kind of stopped moving, right? And so it's a little bit bunched up right there. That's okay. This is, this is a very simple bag. And sometimes your, your thread, the free end, will get caught up inside of a few stitches and it'll seem like it's kind of sewed in. It's not really. If you just very lightly pull on it, it'll come loose like that, right? Okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and cut that. Okay, that looks okay, to be honest. It's not the best, and indeed you can even see I should have done a little bit better job of, of lining this up, making sure that they stay top and bottom, uh, e even on the side. It goes over a little bit. That's okay. It's not a big deal. We stayed more or less on the inside here, and if you look, it's not coming out. That's acceptable. That's okay. <laughs> That's not bad. Okay, so let's try again over on this side. This time we'll try to make sure that we keep it as even as possible. Now, I could flip it around. Typically you wanna keep your, your, your excess on the outside of your machine, right? But, I don't know. I feel kinda of like right now I would be more comfortable if I just kinda of folded a little bit under right here and then I kept it on this side. Because I want to kind of keep my, um, my, my my line going on the inside here. Mm, I don't know, it's just me. Maybe it would be better if what I did was I flipped it over like this, right? Ah, yeah, that's probably better. Okay, that's what we'll do. We'll flip it over like this. So just, you know, try to figure it out as you go. It's okay to figure things out as you go. If you want to be multi-talented, have, having lots of skills in various fields, you can't be afraid of figuring things out as you go. Everything's going to be alright. Okay, so I'm trying to do a better job this time, especially since this side, as I noticed earlier, has it's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit less room for error. So I'm going to try my best to make sure that it's lined up as equally as possible. Okay. Now the problem that I'm running into now that I see, I don't know where my line is, where my stop line is. So I'm just gonna look 
and then I'm going to draw this line on the opposite side as well. So I know how far down I should sew before stopping. Okay, so here we go. There's my pedal. There we are. Uh oh, I'm not moving. Okay, that's all right. So if you if you get it started and you you notice that your your fabric's not getting pulled by the foot, just move it a little bit, right? Don't move too far because you don't want to make a big crazy stitch, but um. You can move it just a little bit. All right. This time, I'm going to move it a bit more than what even I would prefer to move it. And then I'm going to start over, to be honest. I need it to go a little bit deeper. If you're not quite getting the traction you need, what you can do is you can move your needle to one side or the other. So in this situation, for example, I might want to move my needle uh, to the left. Okay, so different sewing machines have different ways of doing that, and that's okay. Just figure out whatever you do for your sewing machine. Move your needle over a little bit, and then it gives you a little bit more, um, a bit more purchase. Okay, get my string out of out of the way, and I don't want it looped around if I can help it. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so it looks like from where my needle is, now this line in the middle should pretty much just be right there on the edge of my fabric. Okay, that's looking all right. Down, we're good to go. Let's help it along by pushing a little bit if we can. Yeah, oh, wow, oh, we're getting real close. Yeah, well, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, but it's not what I want. Let's try going backwards. Oh no. All kinds of problems, but that's what happens when you're sewing. All right. First, let's let's get rid of some of this garbage that we've got. It's, this is very unsatisfactory. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're just going to cut right through the middle of it. <coughs> Excuse me. So like getting over a cold. All right, so you see we just cut right through the middle, the heart of it, and then it pulls out really easily. It's not, not any kind of a serious problem that we've run into here. But what's happening is uh, we have the foot, right? And the foot sits on top of this, uh, this moving part that kind of, it sinks down, and but it grabs and it moves in a circle. And what it does is it pulls your fabric through. Right? That's what makes sewing machines so nice is they kind of automatically uh, do the things that you would otherwise have to do manually. Um, but if you don't quite have enough uh, space, and indeed what I think what I've done is I've probably compounded my problem. By moving my needle to the left, I've made it so that less fabric is under this foot. What I need to do is make sure that more fabric is under the foot so that it has more to grab. So what we're going to do is we're going to move my needle back over the opposite direction, all right? And then what we'll end up with is more fabric under the foot, giving us more, um, more traction. Now, what I also need to do is rethread um, my needle. And so anytime you need to rethread a needle with a sewing machine, my advice, um, my non-professional advice, is to completely redo it especially I mean if you have the, th the thread hanging down you're probably safe to just go ahead and stick it through but you need to make sure that it's going through all the correct parts and so if you just go ahead and pull it back out and rewind it things are probably going to be for the best now this machine I believe is rather simple hope that it's as simple as it seems to be and these uh, these auto threaders seem to be quite nice if you can remember how to use them <laughs> there we go oh 
Oh, that's not too bad. Okay. Yeah, the auto threaders are pretty nice. Figure out how to use your auto threader, and I think you're gonna have a lot of uh, fewer troubles getting these tiny little pieces of thread through those holes. If you don't have an auto threader, that's okay, but um, it's just gonna take a little more effort. Okay, so there's lots of lines on here on your sewing machine. This is to help you keep things uh, even, right? So here you see like a 10 and on the 16 on mine. Um, maybe yours is something else. And then down at the bottom, I think it's in probably inches, 3 eighths and 5 eighths. Um, I prefer centimeters and millimeters myself. So 10 and 16. I'm not quite on either of those, but I am really close to this one line right here, which looks like it's probably like an, uh, maybe a five. Can't see it, but I think it's probably five. So I'm gonna you just try to keep your fabric edge along these lines and it, you tend to get a straight uh, seam. Okay, here we, here we go. Let's try again. Maybe make quick sure maybe my bottom bobbin thread is okay. Hard to say for sure. Where is it? I don't see it. I'm gonna double check to make sure that it's okay because if it's not okay, I'm just gonna waste more time. And while wasting time is not something that I shy away from, it's uh, not something I wanna do while trying to make a video. Okay, maybe, maybe we're gonna be all right here. Make sure I got that lined up as best as I can. All right, here we go. Uh, look, I'm just I'm still sewing in the same spot. I'm not quite getting the purchase that I need. Okay, that's better. That's better. Okay, now we're gonna go backwards just a little bit. Help me out here. Don't don't screw me up. All right, safe, safe. And if you keep the side of your fabric with your line, the same distance, and the same overlap, you're gonna get a straight seam. All right? Focus on only what you need. Just fine. Oink. Yep, that looks good to me. That looks quite good. Again, I got a little bit of a bunch up down here, and it's because I had that initial trouble um, where it was it was just running in place. It wasn't quite moving along. Um, it's hard to start on the very edge of a piece of fabric. Um, if you can, it's nice to start in the middle. Maybe if I had started here and gone this direction instead, it would have been better but I didn't really want to start in the middle and then end down here because then you, when you go backwards down here you, you pretty much have the same problem and then if I had messed up I would have to redo all of this and that means I have to pull out all these little pieces uh, all these little these little um, stitches and I didn't want to have to do that and so I'd rather just pull out a few at the beginning and have to pull out all of them at the end so anyways our ends are not super beautiful, but it looks okay. And now if you, just, just as a test, turn it inside out, you start to notice the shape of a bag. It's starting to look pretty good, right? Yeah. So that's the upside down side. That's the right side upside. I like that fabric. It looks pretty good, I must say. Now what we need to do since we still have um, our fabric is still properly um, pressed what we need to do now is sew these individually okay so let's turn it back inside out because we're not done we were just having a little look I hope everything is fitting on the camera there um, I can't really see my angle from here so what we want to do now, we want to sew these individually. 
we want to go basically we want to start off here we can give it a little bit of empty space it's not a problem but we want to sew this and then we want to sew this right two times on each side here and here okay why do we want to do that because we want to make sure that this part does not unravel okay so here we go which side do we do first uh, whichever side I'd like let's start here so I'm just going to fold this side down just to kind of get it out of the way I'm gonna start right there all right Sure, I'm where I want to be. I can see the thread. I'm gonna go a little bit further down, and that looks all right. Oh wait, my, my needle is all over a little bit. I want to make sure that I'm not forgetting about that. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go forward a little bit and back a little bit and forward again. more stitches and back done there's one pull it up clip her off that looks pretty good I'm very happy with that well again I seem to have a lot of bunch up here um, I bet what's happening well except that I can see some loops I'm not exactly sure why it's doing that. My my machine might actually need a little bit of um, of uh, tuning. So, in that case, it would be better if I kept the bottom on the inside. Uh, sorry, that kept the bobbin thread on the inside of the of the pocket, right? Because you're going to probably see that. But mm, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> Maybe it'll be all right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. You, you can't worry too much. Let's keep it going. All right. Here we go. Again, this is not the most professional pocket ever. We want something that we can use and that we're happy with making, with having had made. Should use some proper grammar there. Uh, okay, so maybe move my needle back over a little bit here. 0.5 is default. I could move it over a little more. 1.5, okay, that seems like a happy number to me. All right, work with me machine, come on biking. Here we go. Okay, and back we go. All right, and then forward again. Oh no, I probably went a little too far, but let's, let's try to pull it back. Oh yeah, that's getting all kind of bunched up. <laughs> All right, well, that's okay. Um, this especially is a unimportant position here. So what happened just now is that I went a little bit too far uh, to the end. And so as I tried to go backwards, um, it didn't want to, the foot didn't want to pull the fabric. And so it just kind of kept sewing in that same spot. But it's not so bad, actually. I can look and I can see actually there's like a stitch and a half. So it did go backwards a stitch and a half. That's okay. That's acceptable. So now we've got um again, it's it's really bunching up right there at the beginning. And that bothers me a little bit, but I think it will clean up um as we trim away the uh the excess string. I think it will look better. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I think it will. I think it'll clean up just fine as we as we trim away the excess string. 
but you just have to be careful not to actually trim away uh, your actual hem, your hemline. Okay, so that's all right. Let's get this other side. Maybe we'll go this way. Nah, let's go this way. I feel more comfortable. You don't need to force yourself into any particular style. Um, do whatever makes you most comfortable, I find. Close is good enough. All right, here we go again. Get a couple stitches in there. All right, and go backwards. And back forwards. pull it back I'm happy with that so if you look if you notice here at the end the, it's, it's really hard for you to see so I'm going to describe it as best I can when um when I come to the end and then I go backwards again my thread is already um, it's not hanging free it's already been sewn into the fabric as it goes and so when it goes backwards, it's very clean for it to, to then just make stitches back, right? And so these ends look very nice compared to the beginning where my thread is a little bit bunched up. And it's because um, when I first start sewing, my threads are just kind of hanging loose and they're out there, right? <coughs> Excuse me. And so this thread, this extra, it gets bunched up, but you can't really just cut that extra off because you need it to kind of hang out so that you make sure that it it goes where it needs to go. If you, if you cut it, it might get just jumbled up inside your machine, and that's not what you want. So I think probably the best way to prevent this, first of all, I have a machine that's well-tuned. Uh, this, this machine has been through a lot, even though it looks quite nice. Um, this was a gift from my friend, and I know that this machine, this machine has not been uh, treated in the best possible way, simply because of what it was used for. And that was as a, uh, a demo unit. So, all right, I need to move my needle back over. Yes, that's much better. Let's go to five. That looks all right. Okay. So I think what we can do to kind of help make sure that this is less of a problem, find your strings, especially from the bobbin and the bottom. Make sure that they're pulled out nice and flat so they're not getting bunched up under your material. And I think you'll find that you'll have um, less trouble there. Now, I'm not convinced that I have it pulled out properly. Okay, now I, I think I see that it probably is okay. So let's see if that works. This is an experiment. Okay. So far, seems okay to me. And work with me here. And back. Please, please. Okay, that's good enough. That's good enough. We started to get close to the uh, to the edge there. We almost fell off the side of our fabric, but I think we managed all right. Oh yes, that looks much better. That looks much, much better. So again, it really is. It's just that, uh, it's that little bit of extra fat, uh, extra string that just gets looped up under there. So you can clean it up if you work at it a little bit, and I probably will work at it a little bit um, once I've kind of finished with everything. 
just to make it look a little bit better. But if it gets a little bit bunched up and you're not too worried about appearances, as I'm not, you find it's not it's not critical. Okay. So that's all four sides. Let's clean this up a little bit here. Okay, there we go. Now, on to the next step. And the next step, um, we're going to go back to our ironing board just to be sure, all right? So, back to the ironing board. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we need uh, space for the drawstring. And so to do that, we need to make sure that we have a loop with an open end, okay? And we also want to hide this, this cut edge so that that um, string does not become obvious and visible, okay? So we need to fold it under and then down, something basically like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the point where we started to sew these lines uh, individually, okay? So basically it's going to look just like that. And we're not going to sew this direction, we're going to sew this direction, okay? So what we need to do, first we need to iron uh, this down just a little bit, just a little bit. Something that we can sew uh, into and keep it nice and even about like that okay try to keep it equal all the way across and iron it flat Okay, that's not too bad. Again, please remember, I am not like the best sewer in the world. I just kind of know what to do, uh, but I'm not real great at it. So there are a lot of people out there on YouTube that you can, you can watch that are really good at sewing. And I highly recommend you check them out. But if you want to see that this is something that anybody can do, somebody like me who really doesn't really know what they're doing can still manage to do it that's what I hope to show you is that anything is possible for anyone you don't have to have amazing skills to make something happen you just have to try and there we go yes I see it do you see it it's not quite equal it's not quite even that's okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to work. Oh, I, I'm going definitely a little bit too far here on my fold. Let's pull that back up. Oh, it's hot. This is just going to be on the inside. It doesn't have to be too big. And yet it is. It's a little too big. See if I can perhaps go like oh the whole thing is hot. Irons work well. Luckily for us, right? Okay, how are we looking here? If I have it pulled straight, does it even out a little bit, I hope? A little bit, not a lot. This side, well, it actually doesn't look so different. Maybe it's okay because we're not sewing it together. We're sewing it down here. And close is gonna be good enough. This top part is gonna have our cord through it and it's gonna get bunched up. 
you're not going to notice uh, any mistakes that you might be making. So I think I'm okay with that. That looks okay to me. All right, we can now turn off our iron. We don't need it anymore unless we decide that we want to um, re-iron something due to it not being done properly. But I think that's okay. So back to the sewing machine. Now, home stretch here before we have to just start uh, putting things together by, by hand without any more sewing. And what we want to do, we want to fold down each half, basically to our, to our joint that we've left here, okay? About that. That looks pretty good to me. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. Okay, and we can do it one of two, one of two ways. We can go ahead and turn it inside out if we want, but I think that might be a little bit premature. Um, I think this method is probably a little bit better um, because it allows us to keep everything flat. What we can do is uh, sew from this side. Oh, you know what I want to do? I really kind of want to, to iron it once more. But I don't really want to turn the iron back on and have to go back to it. <laughs> but I do kind of want to just make sure that this stays nice and even. So we'll just use our hands, kind of hand press it. Okay, that's good enough. Let's go for it. Here we go. All or nothing. All right, line that up as best we can. Something we feel comfortable with. Make sure our string is going out the right direction. <coughs> Get all those old cold coughs out of the way. And we're going to try to just follow this line here on the inside. I'm not going to, of course, sew it closed. We're going to leave that open. But we're going to follow that line with our needle on the right side. And we're just going to go straight down. All right? Don't forget to uh, get your backward stitches in there as well just to make sure that everything stays nice and locked and tight. Again, if it's not perfect, it's completely okay because it's, this particular part is going to be all bunched up because of the cord. You're not really going to notice. Just get it as close as you can. All right. I think that may be perfect. Perfect, I say. Well, nothing I do is really perfect. I think it might be close to perfect. Perfect. Oh yeah, that looks all right. I definitely uh, kind of came up a little bit on this end, but all of my hem is completely under there. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. Yep, looks okay. Now, we did the same thing with the opposite side, right? So we just need to fold it down basically to this line that we see here. Where did that line come from? Did we, sew, did we iron that in? I don't know. Maybe we did. Did we try to do that? No. Not that I can recall. What I recommend is try to make sure that your tops are equal because that's what you're going to notice. You're not going to notice so much if the bottom is equal uh, if it's sewn exactly the same on either side. And then just hand press it since we don't want to get back out of our iron. We could iron it. It would be better, I promise. But uh, 
Ain't nobody got time for that. Here we go. Make sure everything's kind of out of the way. All right. Looks pretty good. Strings. Don't bunch up on me now. Uh, oh, you know what? I want to do it the other side. Okay, sorry about that. I do want to do it from this side just because I would like to keep that. Uh, if it does bunch up on the bottom, I want to kind of keep that on the inside. Right? Because uh, right here, maybe it's not easy to see because of the camera being far away, but here it's a little bit bunched up and here it's not. I did a better job here than I did here. So let's just, again, let's, let's try to do our best. Although our best does not have to be perfect. Always remember that. We're not artists. We are artisans? <laughs> no, hardly artisans. Okay, here we go. Just, just give it your all, right? Do your best you can, and everything will be all right. I'm just gonna have a quick look there. That looks all right to me. That looks all right to me. I think we're good. I think we're good. Go over just a little bit more. Okay. Ah, maybe a little bit too much. Okay. 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 <laughs> Fighting that urge to be perfect, but here we go. Where's my pedal? There we go. Oh, oh, are we moving? Are we moving? Okay, we're moving. We're moving. We're good. We're good. One more. Okay, this is two. All right, that'll be all right. And it would be easier to see if I had someone from the other side. Uh, but like I said, I kind of want to make sure that I uh, I don't want to get bunched up on this side, so I'm going to go at it blind. And I think I did okay, to be honest. All right, let's have a look. Whoo, yeah, that looks okay. That looks okay. Oh, boy. There's nothing like a gamble that pays off. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's clean it up just a little bit. There's always so many little threads hanging off when you sew something. Yeah, they, they clean up easy enough. But. All right, so let's flip that inside out, have a look at our pocket, a little drawstring bag that we've made. Oh yeah, that looks okay. Now you'll notice and it's okay because we're, we're keeping it simple, right? You notice how this is actually a little bit off, right? And it's because we ran a straight seam inside out, basically, all the way down. If we wanted this to line up better, we would have to have um, folded this top part in a little bit more so that we would have less uh, fabric trying to poke its way out past this seam, right? Perhaps you can see what I'm talking about here. It sticks out a little bit more here than it does over here. Um, that's gonna be okay once we have everything put together because again, the, the drawstring is gonna cinch this top part together and you're not gonna notice um, what we notice right now that we've just finished. So it's okay, but that's why it's happening. Maybe you're wondering, um, and that's why. And there are ways to prevent that from happening, but it requires more work, it requires more effort. We want this to be simple, we want this to be easy, we want it to be successful. So for now, we ignore it. And later on, as you get better at sewing, uh, you'll understand how to fix these things uh, just because you'll understand what you're doing better um, and I say for now 
Don't worry about it. Look at that. I can just fold it in a little bit because we don't have the strings in. It looks so nice, right? Yeah, I think so. That's a nice little pocket. So, now we need to move on to... Aha. Pardon me. Okay. Now we need to put our cord and our beads. We'll have one bead on each side with two cords of the same length that are just long enough to go from about here, which is what I would say is what, three or four centimeters, right? On the outside of the pocket in no extra space over here, back around and then here again. Okay, so if this is this my measure, put my measure in tape. Aha, here we are. Here we're looking at about twenty four centimeters long. So that means we're going to need twenty four plus another yeah, let's say four. That's 28 and 28, uh, what, 56, I believe, 56 centimeters and 56 centimeters. Um, I don't particularly like those numbers because this is three meters and 56 and 56 is, okay, it's still less than 150. So actually uh, one, three meter, one three meter length would be able to make uh, two bags which is what I was hoping for. So that's good. Okay, so let's do that now. Let me just double check my camera real quick to make sure that we can see what's going on here. Yeah, it looks okay. We'll do it right here. All right, so I estimated, uh, or calculated rather, I suppose, 56 centimeters, we can we can check that. Um, I would like to double check it just to be sure before I go and start cutting. And we don't want to pull it too tight because it's not going to be pulled tight all the time. So about here, right? So if we do 56, we're going to end up with about that. And to be honest, I kind of feel like I need a little bit more than that because I'm gonna have to tie a knot and have a bead on the end of this a bead and a knot and it's a little bit it's a little bit not quiet enough so if we pull it around over here a little bit right yeah that looks that looks much better that feels much more comfortable let's check and see what that would be That's about 33. So that would be 66. 66 times 2 is 132. <coughs> still within 150 centimeters, which means that we can still get two bags worth of, out of one three meter length of uh, cord. So that's good. So let's just do that. We'll measure out 33 doubled in half close enough to it and give it a little cut and then we will just keep it simple and then give it a little cut all right Get that out of the way let's take our our beads okay and we string it through. Now, it's nice if you have one of those things where you can like connect your cord and then like feed it through, right? Those are really nice. And you can kind of just make one with like a pencil or a chopstick or something. Um, I don't have one, although I do have some chopsticks here, but Maybe just my scissors, just poke it, 
right? So all we got to do is just poke it. Want this to go through. We're, we're halfway. I can feel it. It's about here. Just keep poking. It's got to work out, right? We know that we want to have just a little bit hanging out here because it's got to go all the way around. So let's just keep poking and poking and poking until we have about that much hanging out. And then we'll work it through. How about that? I'm alright with that. Well that should be enough actually for it to come out the other side. So let's do that first. Well I can feel it, but Oh boy. Maybe this is not gonna work out well. What we can do. Okay, I'm gonna get a chopstick. I'll be right back. Let me get out of my chair. Okay. Alright, here's a chopstick. Let's see. Maybe we don't have to uh, take it all back out and try again if we can just work it through with a chopstick. There we go. Yeah, that's working. I can feel it. It's coming out. It's just right there. There's a bunch of ways to do this. Uh, you do it however you feel is best. Those little uh, tools really do make it easier. But uh, chopstick apparently works just fine. Okay, we're through one side. And now we just have to go back through the other side. And if we can. Oh, it didn't. I was hoping that I would be able to just semi impale it and push it all the way through, but I couldn't quite. Tell you, having the right tool for the job always makes the job easier. It usually does a better job as well. If you can, get the right tools for the job. If you can't, make do with what you've got. Making do, I find, requires more effort and then also depends far more upon your ability of uh, being, what's the right word? Creative, ingenuitive, but it's possible. Okay, so we don't have to completely straighten it out now, but what we wanna do is get our, our, uh, our ends as equal as possible. And uh, the big end is gonna face outward okay the small end of your bead is going to face inward so the, the, these beads have a, a larger size hole and a smaller size hole and these are made for um, this particular purpose in fact uh, as far as I know and so what you want to do is just kinda tape would make this easier and I do have some tape that I could get but I don't think it's gonna make it easy enough to, to warrant getting the tape when it's already so easy so Maybe if you have a slightly um, tighter fit, I recommend tape. Just tape your ends and then it slides right over. Um, this, this one fit quite simply. And then, holding them together, you just want to give one single knot. Like this. Okay? Pull it tight, as close to this frayed end as possible. And you can allow it to fray and it will look okay. And you might even fray it more um, after you're done. Just try to make sure that your knot looks pretty nice. And when you pull your bead over the knot, it should hide in there quite nicely. You don't see much of the knot at all. Right? Like that. And that's halfway done. Now what we're going to do is we start on this end so I know. Start on this end, 
loop around this end and come back out this end. So we have two uh, ends here and then we add another one and then we're done. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. I wonder if we can make this easier because can you see how there's a little this this stuff is kind of uh it's made clearly as as like there's probably like a, a hole and then it gets braided kind of around this hole um it makes like a tube that's going to make it actually quite easy to uh to run through i wish i had realized that earlier <laughs> yeah look at that Pulls. All right. Let's not pull that all the way through. Looking good. Looking good. And back around this other end. So if you notice, um, I've kind of come out on the bottom here. I think I'm probably on the bottom on this end as well. Yes. So let's just try to maintain that, and it will look more uniform, a little more clean. Stay on the bottom. Okay, and pull that off, and thread our chopstick. Okay, now let's get this on. Remember the, the big end goes to the outside, where the knot is gonna be. So we just kind of pull this tight around here. Go on the small side. A little twist I find helps a little as well. And make another knot. Keep it towards the end. Okay, that's looking all right. Let's get it tight. Not too close to the edge because we don't want our knot to slip off. Pull our bead down. That looks all right. Okay. And that is a finished pocket. Now watch this. How simple that is for the drawstring. And can you notice any of those problems that we ran into as we were making this? Not at all. You can't see a one of them. It just looks great. Let's put some stuff in here. Okay, here's our, uh, our tape measure. Fits like a glove. Our scissors like a glove our fabric pen like a glove uh, our garbage from earlier like a glove bam it's perfect right i'm happy i hope you're happy this is a nice little project it's really easy to do uh the sewing of it is, doesn't take much work at all to be honest and it turns out quite nicely uh, if your fabric doesn't have a top and a bottom, then you won't have an upside downside, and that would be nice. Um, but yeah, it looks it looks all right. So that's our project for today. That is a simply sewn. Uh, just a couple strings here, maybe be trimmed up. That's a simply sewn drawstring bag. <laughs>